Gospels to the book of Luke. Chapter 9. The book of Luke. Last Sunday we looked at the true meaning of Easter. And we saw that the significance for Easter for us who believe is that without the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, no one has access to God. That looks like a very, um, how do you say it? You, you, are you saying that only you Christians are the only ones who can see God? That's what the Bible declares. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. And we said that Easter is significant because the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians that if Jesus did not die and if he did not rise up from the dead, then our faith is useless. <coughs> it is just another religion. Religion is a way by which we grow to find God. But God has made the way in Christ. Yeah? And that is why we rejoice. That is why it is, I can proudly, that we say, I am a believer. I am a Christian. Not that I go to church, because going to church doesn't make you a Christian. I believe. And therefore I gather with other believers in worship. Amen. Amen. And today we're going to look at the cross. Since he said a week after Easter. Uh, we look at the cross. And this is why I want us to look at a statement by Jesus in Luke 9. And the verse 23. I'm going to begin from verse from verse 18. Could you get me a glass of water? Thank you. Once when Jesus was praying in the private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. And we did that last Sunday, where Muslims still believe that Jesus is a prophet, that he is not the Son of God, and that he is a special prophet, and the denial of his death as well. But what about you, he said? Thank you, God. But what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answers, You are the Christ of God. Jesus warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, If anyone should, would come after me, he must deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world 
and get loose or forfeit this very life. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some of you standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Let's see Luke 14, 27. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them he said, If any one of you comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Amen. So what is the cross? What is this cross that we are supposed to carry every day? Is it a piece of wood? Carved? The word of God. Huh? The word of God. The word of God, someone says. For many, to symbolize that you are a Christian, in fact, this week I was hearing on the BBC that the bishop of, uh, I think of Scotland or something, somewhere in the UK, they have to actually stop people from wearing the cross because it is offensive. So this is that the message of the bishop, the Catholic bishop of Scotland, I think it's Scotland or Ireland, was that Christians in the UK should show their faith by wearing a cross. And this is a debate which is going on. Huh? So for many people, carrying a cross is carrying a cross on you every day. And I think I, I like the idea of showing people that I'm a Christian by wearing a cross. It is, some people will say, it is a reminder for myself. Of course, it is a symbol of what I believe. Yeah? It's a symbol. And this symbol I carry to remind me every time that I'm a Christian. Of course, how I should live. Just wearing a cross and showing it to people doesn't make you a Christian, does it? No. Huh? No. Does it? No. In fact, some people find it offensive. And I hear that rock stars to mock Christianity, wear the cross upside down. Mm. Doesn't mean a thing. If you wear the cross upside down, it's not offensive, is it? Because, as you can see, in Luke 9, Jesus, and in Luke 14, the context of the cross was discussed in the context of discipleship, following Jesus. And that's why first Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say I am? And they gave him all different kinds of answers. And then he said to them, who do you think I am? And of course their answer was not, oh we think that you are a prophet, oh we think that you are this. No. Their answer was, you are the Savior. You are the Lord. You are God's Son. It is a declaration of faith and belief in Him. It is what made them His followers. And, and Jesus turned around and said, look, if you want to follow me in the context of suffering, Mm. And, so, and sometimes we only remain there. Somebody will say, oh, this is my cross. Meaning, I accept that whatever suffering comes to my life is what God has given me. I think that that is stretched too far. I don't think that Jesus was saying 
that any sickness, any suffering, any pain, any misfortune that we face as Christians is a cross that he has given us. That is wrong. But sometimes you hear people say that. Oh, this is my cross. My cross is my pain. My cross is my misfortune. My cross is my stupidity sometimes. My things that I did that brought me problems is my cross. It is not the cross. Life is filled with suffering. I bought a small book and I saw it in the shop and, it, and the title of it is The Gods Are Not to Blame. Those of you who are from Africa know that you've you know, read this book as a little book. And it starts by saying, life is filled with suffering. And therefore, it is good to say that the birth of a child brings with it suffering. How many of us in this room have not suffered before, in one way or the other? Even people who live in luxury, in castles, and have servants, and get their feet massaged when they want it. I'm sure they have a suffering somewhere. As long as you are born in this world, and you will suffer. Whether you are a Christian or whether you are not a Christian, you will suffer. So the cross in this context is not about suffering. What is the cross for us today as Christians? I often, if you live in Malta, you will see it. There are crosses everywhere. Crosses in the classroom. In fact, someone said this. There was this debate um, when the European Court of Human Rights, you know, asked them to take down the crosses in Italy and judged it that was offensive. In Malta, we stood up and we defended it. We want to defend it. Crosses in our classrooms, crosses in our law courts, crosses in our offices. When you go to, I was in court recently and they said to me, give a testimony. And they said, do you want to swear by the cross or kiss the Quran or kiss the Bible? I said, I'm fine, I will make a declaration. I don't want to kiss none of those. But you are a Christian, yes? The cross is in my heart. It is what I believe. It is what marks me as a person. It is what forms my values every day. And that's what Jesus meant. What was the cross for Jesus? What was it? It was the point where he laid his life. It was the point where he surrounded completely to the will of the Father. And he said it, I will be crucified, I will die, because that was what he came for. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but he came to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus was always saying that, I have not come to be crowned a king. My kingdom is not of this world. I have come as a servant. I have come that I will die. Philippians 2 says that. That Jesus left his glory in heaven. And he came, he took human flesh. And he came down as a servant to die even dead on a cross. So what is the cross for Jesus? The cross for Jesus is a point of surrender, complete surrender to the will of God. For us, that meant access to God. 
So Jesus saying, carry your cross daily and follow me, is this submission that we Christians are called to live daily. You cannot say that you are a Christian and live your way. How many of you saw Afari Tana this week, Friday? There was Sharabak and there was and there something. They were discussing, which is a very hot topic in this country at the moment, the marriage of gay people. Uh, now we fought for divorce. We've got it. So we've now moved one step further. We're going to fight for the marriage of everyone. And so they had, they had Gabi, who is the head of the World well, Gay Rights Movement. Then they had uh, Jeffrey Policino Orlando, who was the one who put the private bill for the divorce. And then they had Njere, who is the guy who put pornographic photos of his boyfriend, he's a boy, you know, on television, and now he switched to Labour Party, and which is now promoting Labour gay rights, and they had all this, and then they had Pastor Golden in my chair. And Pastor Golden was, was a person who was accused recently that because a person who was homosexual said that he was healed by God and now he's no longer practicing as a homosexual. And when Pastor Golden said that the whole of Malta took him to task, how can you say that a gay person can be healed? Are they people with diseases? So this weekend, last Friday, there was a discussion on television about the marriage of gay people. And it came to this point. And so everyone looked at Gordon and they were, now we had two members of parliament and some people talking about, and they turned to him and they said, this is a civil right. The equality of all people. You cannot discriminate between people. If people who are men and women marry, then anybody can marry. If you want to marry a man, marry a man. Want to marry a woman, marry a woman. Now, what, what is your belief about that? If I sat there, what would I say? It's true. You can't treat people unequally. But people are treated unequally every day anyway. No? With this all equality business. What is your view about marriage as a believer? Carry your cross daily. What is it that forms the way you live? What is it that forms the way that you think? What is it that forms the way that you make your decisions every day? That is carrying the cross every day and following Jesus. Because Jesus set the path for us, did he not? So after Easter, we need to reflect on the cross. And one of them, and I said this about this debate, because one of them said, listen, I'm a Christian, I'm a very good Christian. But, I must believe that everybody is equal. That part is right. But, today, what does the Bible teach? Or how does the Bible define marriage? I will necessarily think about how what you define marriage, but what does the Bible define marriage to be? And how would you live in this society? Now divorce is here. How would you live with that? In fact, they attacked that one. When 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 God mentioned the name of Jesus, they said but Jesus did not mean for people to marry and divorce. 
But now we have divorce in Malta. How do you deal with issues in your marriage and in your family? Is divorce an option for you? Or is the covenant that you have made with your wife or husband, is it what guides you? Is it the covenant relationship in a marriage that guides you? Therefore, today, carrying the cross is living in the way of Jesus. And saying that for me, marriage is more than a partnership between two people. That marriage is a covenant. A covenant that is made before God. And a covenant that is lived in God and Christ. Are there problems in marriages? Yes. Are there issues we cannot be, be reconciled? Yes. However, I believe that two believers, two Christians, who truly live under the cross will find any difference reconcilable. Because we are taught to love and to forgive. So Jesus said to Peter, who do you say I am? What is the meaning of the true cross after Easter for you and for me? If anyone will come after me, verse 23, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We live in a society that does not want to deny itself. It's my right. Yes. Sometimes I find people, you know, this week I was conversing with someone. He came to me and he told me, after I need a lawyer. And I go, okay? For what? He said, I said, I can send you to he said, no, I need a lawyer to come here. He said to me, it is my right. And I said to him, what right? because I'm a refugee in Malta, so I have a right to a lawyer. I said, yes, you have a right to a lawyer. But, you don't have a right to a lawyer to come to you. And we kept talking, and at the end I said to him, listen, this is, yes, you're a refugee, but this is not your country. At the end of the day, I said to him, you have no right to Malta in, in any way. You have no right to this country. I, for instance, have no right to this country. Everything that I have gained here is a privilege given to me. You can go back to your country and claim your right if you want. But you can come to Malta and claim a right. In a very simple sense. But I'll bring a point. We live in a society that we have been taught to be so self-centered and so egoistic that we have a right to everything. Deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. So I will suggest two things or three things. As Jesus said in Luke 14, he said, to be his disciple, <coughs> you must carry your cross daily. And we have said that carrying your cross daily is not carrying a piece of wood carved into a cross and hanging it on your, on your neck. Well, if you want to do it, do it. I know people who have gold crosses, people who have got you know, wooden crosses. In fact, nowadays they have different kinds of crosses. They have, you have the Franciscan cross, and then you have got the Augustinian cross, and you've got the Catholic cross, and you've got the Pentecostal cross, and you've got the Methodist cross. Name it! All kinds of crosses with different designs. Please, if you want to wear them, wear it. But you're wearing a cross to symbolize something. It is not what makes you a disciple of Jesus. You can wear a cross and not be a disciple. 
No? Like a rock star who wears a cross but decides to wear it upside down. He's wearing a cross anyway, but just upside down. So for us, after Easter, the cross is a symbol of our access to God. Complete access to God. That I don't need to go in a specific place to meet with God. I don't need to go into a room of a church to meet with God. I have access to God wherever I am because of the cross. By his death and resurrection, the veil that was between man and God, and man here used in the generic sense, in human beings, has been torn. Now, the Holy Spirit lives in us. I don't need to go to a cave to meet God. I don't need to go to a monastery to meet God. I don't need to go into a church room to meet God. I meet God wherever my heart is prepared to meet with Him. In the private place, wherever I am. I can meet God in the most noisy place because my heart is in tune with God. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a deposit, as a guarantee that we belong to God. So we read last week. So the cross means that you and I have access to God. That the pastor or whoever is not a medium to God. I still find people who say, I want to go in this country is very, very prevalent. I want to go to Mother Mary, and Mother Mary is so close to God that she will take me to Him. That doesn't exist. Because of the cross of Jesus. Or I want to go to Padre Pio, just an example of a saint, or our own Maltese saint, San George Preda. To take me to God, that doesn't exist. That, that they become examples of people who lived in faith, yes. That I can follow the example of Mary, yes. That I can follow the, the, the example of George Brecker, yes. People of faith, yes. But that they lead me to God, no. Because of the cross, I have access to God. Secondly, the cross means freedom to live in victory over sin. Jesus, by his death on the cross, has broken the power, as we have said, of sin and death. Those who believe in him will never die. 